Welcome back to another episode of Right Here in Mass. Today's guest is Matt Loro, Senior Vice President of Commercial Lending at Mountain One Bank. With more than 10 years of credit analysis, portfolio management, new business development, and client management experience, Matt is responsible for managing existing portfolio risk and loan growth. Serving as a board member for Berkshire Education and Correction in Pittsfield, and as a national council member of the Avon Old Farm School for Boys in Avon, Matt is an active member of the Western Mass community. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ashley. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Please share more with our audience about you and what you do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think, you know, from what I do, I think it really stems from Mountain One uh, Financial Down. Um, Mountain One as a financial institution is full service, uh, not only a bank, but also wealth management and, and insurance. Um, and so, you know, our our core is servicing our customers and our clients and, you know, taking an approach to uh, really suit them the best we can while, um, you know, while trying to generate the best operating results we can for the bank and for the financial institution as a whole, um, which leads to my role, obviously, in commercial lending. I am working with uh, clients and business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, real estate developers, um, real estate owners, investors, um, trying to work with them the best I can to structure uh, for their needs, um, whether that be for acquisition, for expansion, um, or for, you know, general operating um, day to day. Um, so, you know, from a banking perspective, uh, you know, my clients range from those that do around, you know, 5 million a year in revenues to uh, over 100 million a year in revenues. And, um, we, you know, we service and uh, can accommodate everything in between. So it's it's uh, a great blend. Um, you know, I am I am uh, where I work with a number of great clientele that are, um, you know, employers in the area that uh, own real estate and improve real estate um, across the state. Um, you know, and again, you know, what I'm targeting for a client is someone to work very closely with, uh, someone that's going to constantly update me on what their are their status is and, and someone that I am going to be working closely with to, uh, you know, update them on their status and, and accommodate what their banking needs may be. Right. And what you had mentioned at the beginning, which I think is really interesting and unique about Mountain One is the full service aspect of the the banking and commercial lending, wealth management and insurance. And so can you talk about how those three components support local businesses? Yeah, I mean, you know, for us, um, it, it's it's doing just that we, we you know, we believe at the core that if you're a business owner or, um, you know, an entrepreneur, you need to surround yourself with the right type of personnel, right? You need a good, a good banker, uh, a good CPA, uh, a good lawyer, um, people that can provide you with information and experience that you need to operate at your best ability. So, you know, between those three business units, as you mentioned, banking, uh, wealth management, insurance, we believe we have the personnel. We believe that we have the structure. Uh, we believe that we have the ability to, uh, to provide just that to our clientele. Uh, we have the ability to, you know, take a more holistic approach and, um, you know, not not necessarily consult, however, uh, provide them with that more of consultative approach to uh, to the relationship. Right. And I can imagine it likely helps to streamline things for them where they don't have to work with so many different professionals. They just have everything or almost everything that they might need in one place. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so with your specific role in commercial lending, I'd love to hear what influenced you or inspired you to pursue that as a career. Yeah, so I, I started my career in uh, on the corporate banking side on, on large institutional banking and uh, more investment banking. Um, and, you know, post pandemic, I moved more into the commercial side of things. So smaller market. Um, but what really influenced me was that experience with larger corporations, understanding how they operated, uh, understanding what they were targeting from efficiencies, working with some of, um, you know, really the smartest people in, across the industries. Um, and that space that gets missed out constantly is that middle market commercial space um, where there's not as much publicity, there's not as much attention to the owner that doesn't have a public stock offering that doesn't have a public debt offering. And so, you know, it's working with those customers to, you know, help them uh, create more efficiencies, help them uh, create a structure that they might be lacking um, from years of an old banking relationship where they're not getting enough attention paid to them. Um, and so, you know, that's what I really take a lot of pride in is working with my clientele, um, is is talking with them, 
um, understanding what their goals are, understanding what they're trying to accomplish on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, I get a ton of joy out of clients that are expanding, that are growing. Um, and because ultimately they are driving local economies, they're driving smaller market economies. Um, you know, it's not as, uh, again, it doesn't get as much attention because it's not necessarily in the public market or, you know, and is getting a, a, a Wall Street Journal article. Uh, however, it is going to uh, make a difference in their economies when they hire 10 more people, when they hire 15 more people, when they're investing in a new plant or new uh, office space. That is a um, that is a great opportunity for our economies uh, that will continue to help these economies grow. Um, you know, it is just I get a ton of joy, a ton of pleasure out of, out of assisting and helping and and being there for them every step of the way. Absolutely. And I love that you mentioned being able to contribute to the local economy because I've interviewed a few people from Western Mass on the show, um, even from the Western Mass EDC and talking about how there's so much that that part of the state has to offer and incentives that are going on with businesses in that area. And so I'd love to hear from your perspective, perhaps some involvement that you've had with any of your clients and in that local economy and anything that's really contributed overall to it. Yeah, and and the, the wonderful thing about Mountain One again is because of our uh, statewide presence, because of our presence uh, south of, of Boston, and because of our presence in Western Massachusetts, we're able to connect individuals and and work with individuals across the state, right? So you know, as we're we can really target um, the people that are kind of investing back into into these economies, we can be a a bank of optimism for a lot of these individuals, right? We can be able to provide the expertise that they need. Uh, because of our staffing across the state uh, to, you know, to transact in, in, a, in a bit in a way that maybe some of the local institutions cannot. Um, and so we have we are a local institution, but because of that statewide experience, we're able to provide them with a lot of more experience than maybe typically the smaller institutions cannot. Um, and so, you know, as we target like the local economies, um, you know, as we talk about those that are transacting local economies that are either expanding or or or, um, you know, growing, um, you know, for us, it's, you know, it, it's nice because you see that some of these government, you know, some of the politicians and government entities really want local investment, right? Whether that be from affordable housing, um, which are projects that we are getting involved in, uh, whether that be from business owners that, you know, have, uh, you know, different numbers of employees and, and you saw what the government did with, you know, retention credits for that. Um, and so there's a lot of benefits to, um, you know, to transacting, to being a part of these economies, um, to growing in these economies, the, you know, local economies, how they tend to, you know, there's a very good story there. Uh, there tends to be a lot of good feelings towards when you, you know, when somebody expands, when somebody hires, um, when somebody constructs uh, new apartments or, uh, you know, renovates an old existing apartment building to make really nice new units. Um, you know, there's, there's examples of projects that, that Mountain One has done, um, you know, with, you know, across uh, Western Massachusetts and in Pittsfield with some of the hospitality products that we've done right on North Street. Um, you know, uh, what we've what we've done in, in North Adams with hospitality projects, um, you know, converting of, you know, old existing hotels into newer, you know, more modernized to support kind of the, the tourism industry, particularly as it relates to, you know, Mass Mocha and into, um, you know, North Adams just in general. So, you know, there's a lot of really good products that, Ma that Mountain One has worked on. Um, and again, you know, we have business owners that are clientele that are these large employers, right? So we're helping them, um, you know, expand. We're helping them operate on a day-to-day -day basis so that they can employ more, so that they can produce mm -hmm. more. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, drive the, the economies, not just locally, but, you know, nationally from the ground up. Yeah, and I feel like there's a lot of ripple effects, too, that comes with that when you uh, give more money into the economy, more money comes back out. And so I think it's wonderful the role that Mountain One plays in helping those businesses and your clients in order to be able to expand and acquire and all of that good stuff. Yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, it, it really is. And there's a lot of smart people that exist in that space, right? A lot of clientele that, you know, have doing been doing this for years. And um, it's really a privilege to be able to work with a lot of these business owners uh, again. And, and it's a privilege to hear their perspective because a lot of these uh, business owners and, and investors have seen multiple cycles in their career. So they've seen, you know, the lows and the highs and, you know, oftentimes they're the best operators, right? Strategically, they know when to scale back. They know when to increase production. 
Uh, they know how to manage inventory. They're, you know, oftentimes a lot of these uh, individuals are are really, you know, smart individuals themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned something earlier in this episode that stood out to me, which was the idea that many companies might have a long-term standing relationship with the bank that's almost non-existent because the banker isn't really involved. And so as a business owner, that can feel frustrating, especially if you have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in this bank and you're not really having that relationship. So if there yeah. were to be a, a business owner listening to this episode who might be in that position where they're ready to make a change, what's the benefit of working with a local bank like Mountain One and what should they know when they perhaps might be ready to make that transition? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say that Massachusetts as a whole is very overbanked, but what you know, what I go by is that it's very underserviced. So, uh, you know, clientele that maybe want a more tailored approach, that want direct access to their lenders, that want direct access to management of the bank, um, know who they want to be known by the bank um, and know that they're, you know, important or know that they're valued to the bank. Then that's, you know, something you really want to consider when banking with a more local institution like us. Um, I think that local institutions have sometimes, you know, been uh, discredited uh, for not having the same experience that, uh, like larger regionals or larger money center banks may have for their commercial banking opportunities. But, you know, Mountain One's made a significant investment in our technology platform, uh, in our banking platform to be able to accommodate those clientele that have typically been with a larger regional or, or larger money center bank. Um, and so, you know, what I'll say is that if you are looking potentially to make that transition, um, you know, then the biggest things that you can have is your financials in order, right? Make it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, make it accessible for a bank to be, uh, able to understand what your business is, how your business is done financially, um, you know, show that you're committed to the process. Um, because, you know, when I get a call day one from a new client or someone that's exploring the opportunity to maybe move to a different financial institution, uh, I'm giving you my all, right? And we expect the same back from that client as well, right? It's it's not a 50-50 uh, conversation or 50-50 process. There's a lot of hours that go into it. And um, you know, we're going to put our best foot forward no matter what. And we expect kind of the same from, from a prospective client as well. Absolutely. And I, from someone who works at a local bank, I think from a customer perspective, it's great that if an issue arises or a question happens, you know that you're speaking to someone local and not someone across the country or who might not really understand the community. And I think that's a really good asset that Mountain One has is just being so involved in the local community and really working closely with their clients. Yeah, absolutely. And that goes from our executive management down. Uh, our CEO, Bob Frazier, is an outstanding commercial banker, understands the understands the model, understands banking, understands client needs, has been doing it for 40 years. Uh, our chief, our chief, our senior credit officer, Dick Kelly, um, he sam- similarly has a 45 year career in, in commercial banking, uh, understands client needs, understands timelines, understands execution. Um, and that's that's how it gets passed down, right? It's a culture at the bank. It's a culture to support entrepreneurs. It's a culture to to support business owners and investors. Uh, that's what we do on a day to day basis. And you know what we what we need is just you know more people to understand that. Absolutely. And for business owners who are really looking to expand their operations, whether it's investing in more infrastructure, perhaps acquiring another business, and they're ready to get a loan and focus on some commercial lending, what advice would you give to them? Oh, uh, you know, I like to tell clients is I don't want to know when you're, I don't want to know when you're going through the transaction. I want to be involved, you know, six months prior, a year prior. If you're thinking about mm-hmm. acquiring or expanding, uh, let's begin that conversation then. I want to be in the room. I want to be talking to you uh, and your CEO, CFO or, or, or controller, or whoever else is helping you make those decisions. I want to be in the room and at the table. Um, you know, that's, that's a process that I think gets overlooked oftentimes is expansion or, you know, or acquisition or maybe buying a larger factory or a larger, you know, uh, office space. Um, you know, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about what that does to the financials for you operating, right? Let's talk about, you know, what your existing financials are, what you're capable of supporting, because ultimately if you're, you know, if you're buying a company, you are buying a new office space or, you know, whatever you may be doing from an expansion perspective, your business has to be able to accommodate and, and be able to grow enough to support what your, uh, your expansion uh, process is. So, you know, that's something we like to be involved in from really from day one in the thought and the conversation. Um, you know, we can help, right? We can help have that conversation with uh, with uh, clientele. And, and that's something we're really good at doing. That's something we have years of, of experience and practice doing with uh, with our clients. 
Absolutely. And I can imagine that the more notice you have in terms of getting involved and the longer you are involved in the project, you're able to kind of guide your clients in a way that will ensure they're successful rather than kind of finding a little bit too late on on that end. Absolutely. Yeah. The financing should be the easiest part of the relationship, right? Once we get to that point, um, you know, it's, it's again, you know, we are, you know, having a good relationship with our client, making sure that we're getting up to date financials, knowing how the client's business is doing. Um, you know, that all leads us to have a very confident conversation with the client that, yeah, you're able to do something like this, or, you know, maybe now's not the right time. Absolutely. And with Mountain One having uh, the wealth management and also the insurance components, of course, there's different professionals you work with there, but I can imagine there's probably several opportunities where you might work with other professionals that your clients hire. And so I'd love to hear kind of how you help to build those relationships and work with other colleagues and whatnot to help meet your clients' goals. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think, and again, this is part of the culture of Mountain One, right? We, we like to uh, pride ourselves on our personnel, our talent. And again, that, that streams straight down from our CEO, Bob Frazier. Um, you know, I know when a client comes to me and says, hey, I also need to, you know, I need to get a, a quote for insurance, right? Maybe a, a property that they have needs liability insurance. And I know exactly that I can redirect confidently to our insurance team, um, you know, and, and let them take it from there. Uh, I don't have to be involved in every single step from an insurance or wealth management perspective. We have an outstanding staff of individuals in both of those divisions, um, you know, that are very accomplished themselves in, in, in their business models. Um, and, you know, from us, you know, from my perspective, it, it just helps support that full holistic view of us being a full service financial institution. Definitely. And with that, do you ever have conversations with your clients like accountants or lawyers or anything like that based on what might come up? Yeah. So, I mean, COIs are, you know, what we call a center of influences, right? So lawyers, CPAs, um, those are important conversations. Right. Um, as you go through the onboarding process with any client, it's very important to see, you know, who their accountant is, who their lawyer is, um, who are the, you know, influential people and in decision making uh, people for for a client. Um, and so, you know, we want to build relationships with them as well. Uh, we want to have the, them to have the trust that, you know, Mount, that their client is in good hands with Mountain One um, and that, you know, we can be accessed by them if they need anything either. Right. And going back to the loan aspect and commercial lending, I know that a fear that business owners often have when they are going into this expansion is perhaps not getting approved for a loan. So I know that this can, your answer can largely depend on the client and the situation. But if that happens where a business gets denied, what would you recommend they do for the next, next best steps to take? Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I would ask for feedback from their, their from their institution. Right. Um, you know, hopefully that they have a relationship with a with a good banker that is providing them some insight to the decision making process, um, insight and having a conversation with them about their existing financials. If there's something that's coming up that's not right, you know, having that conversation with them proactively um, and monitoring their account. Right. It's it goes back to my comment about, you know, Massachusetts being overbanked and underserviced because um, that's, you know, really is it, it really is a case in point uh, as a loan officer, as a commercial um you know, as a commercial manager, I am constantly reviewing my clients' um, information, financials, uh, making memos on, on, you know, where they stand and, and, and how well they're doing. Um, that's my job day to day. That's, you know, that's what I get paid to do. And that's why uh, they, you know, clients choose to bank with us. Right. Absolutely. And depending on where people are getting their information or what they're listening to, there's a lot of talk about a recession maybe happening or maybe not happening. And so from that standpoint, from commercial lending, what would your advice be to business owners who are perhaps in this um, worry about what may come for the future? Yeah, I, I would say that, you know, most business owners, um, I think the biggest the biggest thing for them to understand is, you know, really what their margins are, right? What their productivity, what their operations look like. Really understand your business, right? Understand that if you do a, you know, if you have a 10 or 20% decline in, in, in your sales, uh, what that does to your overall uh, business operations. If you're living uh, penny to penny or on a very slim margin, understand that you are as well, right? That doesn't mean that you're necessarily not a good business. It just means that you have to really monitor and efficient and understand the efficiencies of your business, right? It's oftentimes, you know, you, you see the individuals that are, 
you get in trouble when you know they're trying to grow too rapidly and all they're considering is is top line sales and if they grow the top line then the rest of the business will follow and then you go into a recession and then you have issues with the business um, because you've either expanded too fast or grown too fast and you're not really monitored you know appropriate margins or kept the um, stability in your margins that have gotten you to that point so um, you know if you're if you're a business owner um, you know, it's 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 maintaining that same business operation, the discipline in your business operation, um, the almost, you know, inherent being a bit inherently conservative, no matter what, you know, type of economic cycle we're in. Um, and, you know, un understanding that, you know, sometimes growth isn't the best option in the world. Right. Sometimes the, the best option is to take a step back, um, a fit, you know, make things more efficient and, you know, live to fight another day. Yeah, that's great advice. And I can imagine that depending on the business in their situation, that maybe even a recession could provide really good opportunities for them that they can capitalize on and leverage. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that also really sticks out to me about Mountain One is just the level of involvement that's in the community between mm -hmm. uh, team members being on boards and volunteering and getting involved and all of that. And so I'd love to hear more about what Mountain One does in terms of that, both in Western Mass and the South Shore and why it's important to you. Yeah, it's it's a huge, it's everything that we do. Uh, we're a mutual based institution, right? So we don't have shareholders and that gives us the ability really to um, to give back to the community with with the profits that we generate. Right. And so it's a it's in our DNA to work with nonprofits and uh, to, you know, to raise money for um, causes that, you know, are really, you know, really hit home for Mountain One Bank. Um, you know, we, we do have a large list of, of, of donations every year. Um, you know, we are always considering new uh, new opportunities and, and new causes to be involved in. Um, but, it, you know, that stems all the way from, you know, local you know local university or local colleges through um you know through you know local nonprofits and you know for us it's it's the right thing to do it's the right way to support our our communities and you know oftentimes it's a large part of the local economy too some you know a lot of these nonprofits are you know good local employers and that's the way we continue to support them Absolutely. And with Mountain One having locations in both Western Mass and the South Shore, do you think that there is any potential to continue expanding in that aspect? Or what do you see happening in your role and also in Mountain One as a whole throughout the next few years? Yeah, I, you know, I, I constantly am reminding, you know, teammates and, and staff that it is 2023, right? The historical view of banking needing branches on every street corner. Uh, I don't think that's you know that's not that's not the that's not the view forward. As I mentioned before, Mountain One has made significant investments in both our technology platforms and our personnel. And so, you know, if you're a business owner or you are, um, you know, if you're an investor or you know whatever you may be, if you if you're looking for a banking relationship, we can provide all of that. You know, with our, with our you know online technology platform for for online banking, uh, we you know fully everybody has fully you know automated ACH and RDC. Um, capabilities for clientele, but you know the 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 need to be in a bank branch is probably pretty limited at this point in 2023, right? Going into mm -hmm. 2024, um, but the need to have a good solid banking relationship is ever more important. So you know I am where my clients are. You know my my clients are across the state, and uh, you know if they need me in person, I'm there in person. Uh, and you know that's that's our culture, though. Again, it's uh, it's a small state. We don't have to be, you know, we don't have to be too far away from anybody at any point. Absolutely. And I love that the emphasis on an investment in the online technology platform, because I mean, personally, I feel like I don't often go to my bank. I usually do everything from mobile banking. And so I think especially for busy professionals and business owners, they might not have the time to physically make it into a bank to do their duties or whatever they need to take care of. And so I think it's huge that you provide those remote or virtual offerings to help business owners and streamline things more often for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, our culture, you know, stemming right down from our CEO, again, Bob Frazier, is that, you know, our culture is learning from our clients on how to operate and, and how to run a business. And, and we're a business ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So we are taking that culture and we are providing our clientele with what the resources they need to operate more efficiently on a day to day basis. Right. And I think it's huge that you also mentioned that you will be wherever your clients are. If people do want to meet face to face and have that 
physical connection. I think that it's awesome that you offer that because of course that's some hesitancies that people might have is kind of losing that personal touch. But I think it's wonderful that you put a lot of work and effort into providing that. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it is so much a part of our DNA to have that relationship with our clientele. And, and you know, quite frankly, that's that's some of the, the most fun we have with in this job is building those relationships and spending that time face to face, understanding what, you know, that individual needs and, and you know, what their personality is like. Right. And speaking of your job and the role that you do, say that we have a listener who's tuning in who might be interested in pursuing a career in commercial lending. What would your advice be for them? Yeah, I, I, I think um, first and foremost, I think it's a wonderful career. Um, you know, I think that uh, it offers you a, a wonderful broad range of skills and experience um, because of the nature of commercial banking. We don't just bank a particular industry. So it allows you to understand multiple industries. Uh, it allows you to see multiple types of businesses, how they're run. Um, so if you're somebody that has, you know, intellectual curiosity, if you're constantly interested in learning more um, and you want to be involved and, and commercial banking is a wonderful career. You know, in particular, I do think it will change in the future as technology continues to advance. But again, that just offers that much more of a platform for somebody to learn more and more. Absolutely. And with so many banks available with people who are pursuing this career, it might be difficult to know which one is the best fit for them. So how did you know that Mountain fit, Mountain One was the right fit for you? Uh, well, Mountain One really, you know, again, at the heart of Mountain One, we're a commercial bank, we're a commercial, we're a commercial institution. Um, we take, you know, again, a ton of pride in banking, uh, you know, business clientele and, and commercial clientele. And, you know, again, it stems right from our leadership, right? We have the people in place, we have the experience um, in place of, you know, the and have the ability to uh, accommodate and to work with these type of business owners. Not every bank has that, right? Certain banks uh, have, you know, better, you know, maybe better retail or, you know, uh, whatever that may be, that they might have a better niche in that market. For us, again, it comes from the culture of servicing commercial clients and, and business owners. Right. And I'm curious to hear what your answer to this question is, having worked with so many local businesses, but what would you say your favorite local businesses are to support? <laughs> well, I like to I, I like to uh, credit myself for being a bit of a foodie. So maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> <in> restaurants, <laughs> I would say first and foremost, but um you know, our support comes in so many different ways. Our support comes with, you know, through different types of financing and uh, different types of structures. And, you know, it gets really exciting when you're working with a manufacturer that is, you know, producing maybe a part or, uh, you know, or working with like the larger, you know, end market, um, end market suppliers. Uh, it becomes really, really fun to work with them and understand what their inventory is, understand what their inventory cycles are. Um, you know, oftentimes when you're working with, uh, you know, a business of that size, you, you know, you have really strong financial reporting and, um, you know, you can really have really good in-depth conversations about what they see in the future, what the trends are for them in the market. Um, and that just, you know, makes you such a, uh, a more informed uh, individual. Right. And in your opinion, what makes Western Mass the best place to live and work? Uh, it's a wonderful balance in Western Massachusetts. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, Western Massachusetts has a lot to offer, uh, you know, a lot of different ranges of individuals. Um, you know, we have a good list and a number of, uh, you know, educational institutions. We have a good list and number of good uh, financial institutions. Um, there is a, a lot of um, change occurring in the area as well as we come out of, you know, post-pandemic era where, you know, you have more individuals moving there for better, you know, balance and work-life balance, um, you know, looking for maybe having, you know, a bit of a different, you know, or change in life coming out of like the larger metro areas. So there's a lot of investment going on in the areas and it's a really exciting time to be in Western Mass. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunities continually for us to, uh, to develop, so. Love it. Matt, this has been such an awesome episode and I've really enjoyed having the opportunity to have you share more about your career and all that you've done with Mountain One. And now I'd love if you could share where our listeners can find you online in case they'd like to connect with you further. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, everybody can find, <clears throat> excuse me, find us at uh, <clears throat> mountainone.com. Um, you know, our lenders are listed online. Uh, listed by where their location is and um, 
you know, it's not too hard uh, to find us. If you, if you know a client that's working with us, they probably have their lender's cell phone number and they can get in contact that way. Word of mouth is obviously always a wonderful uh, resource. But, um, you know, mountain1.com, uh, you'll find Mo spokes go, our spokes go, uh, you know, well represented. And um, again, it's, uh, you know, we, we have a fantastic platform and a growing platform. And, um, you know, I look forward to working with some of the listeners. Perfect. And I will share all those links in our show notes that where listeners can click through and connect with you and Mountain One from there. But thank you so much again for coming on the show today. Thanks so much, Ashley. Thanks for having me.